What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and today I wanna to talk all about the iPad Pro and how I use it to take notes at university or college. It's basically changed my life when it comes to organization, taking lecture notes, and basically managing while I'm at university. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Nasser. I'm a second year medical student at King's College of London. And if you enjoy this content, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel if you wanna stick around. I'm gonna show you guys how it is that I actually organize all of my different lecture notes, tutorials, work workshops, online learning modules, etc. on my iPad. Also the color coding that I use in my lecture notes and how that helps me find important information faster. And yeah, hopefully just a bunch of useful stuff that you guys will enjoy. So without further ado, let's just get started. Before you leave it in a comment down below, yes, I know this charging cable is here. And yes, I know it is totally ruining the aesthetic of this video. But anyway, just ignore it. Notability is my app of choice. I've used GoodNotes 5, I've used OneNote, and I just don't like them as much as Notability. It just has the perfect overall package for me. All right, so let me move to the side so that you guys can see everything that I'm doing on screen. First things first, let's start off with what is over here on the left side of my screen. These are what are called dividers in Notability. So if you imagine you had a paper-based version of this notebook, you would have big folders or dividers, and then inside them you would have your different lecture notes or tutorial notes and things like that. So these bigger files over here are folders, kind of like this kind of like this. So this folder over here is gonna be for one subject, let's say. So for example, here it'll be for supporting life or for inflammation or for aging, et cetera, et cetera. And then within that folder, you're gonna have all of your different lectures. Let's talk about aging specifically for a second. So once you've gone into that divider, you'll see here that I have all of my different subjects within that divider. So within the big topic of aging, we have the introductory week, then Parkinson's disease, muscles and bone in aging, the alimentary tract, cognitive impairment, nutrition, etc. And in each one of those smaller uh, subjects, I have all of my individual lectures. So let's take Parkinson's disease, for example. Over here, you can see EL01. So that stands for E learning or online learning number one. And here I have lecture one at the bottom. Whoops. Lecture two, lecture three, lecture four. And so this is an easy way for me to organize all of the different lectures, tutorials, e-learning, workshops, whatever it is that I have for a specific subject. So for Parkinson's, for example, at a glance, I can quickly see that I have four lectures, one e-learning module, and then one workshop. This should actually be labeled W01. I have, I have mislabeled that. All right, nice. So at a quick glance, I can see that I have four lectures here, one workshop and one e-learning module. Me personally, I don't take my lecture notes directly on the lecture slides. And that's because, this is a good example, you get lectures like this sometimes, which are really colorful um, and it's gonna be difficult to write on. It's gonna be difficult to see. Of course, you can use colors that will accent well with the background. But personally for me, this just looks kind of messy. On top of that, I don't necessarily want every single slide in my lecture notes. What I want to do is take the most important slides and include them in my handwritten lecture notes. And that way I can pick and choose what I think is most important, as opposed to having a bunch of slides that I skip through and that are empty without notes because they're not as useful. For example, right here, this is a bunch of papers, it looks like, that are talking about Parkinson's. I don't need to include this whole slide in my lecture notes. I can just write down the one or two sentences that I think are important from this slide. And that's why I don't write my lecture notes directly on the slides. I prefer to make a separate document, which I call important stuff. So for each one of these subjects, I'll have a note called important stuff. So for example, here we have important stuff, Parkinson's disease. If you guys click on that, you'll see that it has the notes for each one of the lectures, tutorials and workshops and e-learning modules that I have worked on for that subject. And the best part is that it's color coded really nicely. So it's easy for me to pick out the important pieces of information that I want and it links and syncs and connects back to all of the different individual lectures that I have here. So let's return to muscle and bone in aging. I have four e-learning lectures and then I also have three case-based discussions. So. When I go to my important stuff document for this subject, which is muscles and bone in aging, which is in the bigger divider of aging, um, if you go to the important stuff, you'll see that I have learned lecture 01, osteoporosis and metabolic disease, which corresponds with lecture 01 over here. This lecture over here that you see is a very typical example of one of my lecture notes. You'll notice that it's divided generally into three columns and always, 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 very rarely with few exceptions, my lecture notes fit on one page. 
So this is where the page ends. If you can see this sort of thicker line over here. So all of my lecture notes for each lecture fit on one page. And that is very important to me because I remember things geographically or spatially on the page. So let's say for example, that I was trying to remember this piece of information. I, when I'm trying to recall this information in, a, in an exam, I'll remember what was to the right of it, what was beneath it, what was up and to the left. That's how I remember different pieces of information that are grouped together, sort of with this spatial or geographical way of remembering things. Let's get rid of all of that. Okay, so, like I said, this is a typical example of my lecture notes split into three columns. And the best part about my notes is that it's color coded really, really well. And my color coding stays throughout all of my lectures so that I always know what each color means. And it helps me pick out the important pieces of information when I'm quickly looking for them at a glance. First things first, you write out the lecture title in pink. And then I write a couple of things in orange. If they don't really fit under a general heading, they're just sort of not fun facts, but general facts about the topic that the lecture is gonna be on. They don't really fit under one of these headings that I put in dark blue. If that fact or piece of information doesn't really fit anywhere, it'll go over here in orange right at the beginning. Then for each lecture slide, I write out the title of the lecture slide in this dark blue color that you guys see over here. So each one of these titles or headings is the heading of a lecture slide. And then within each lecture slide, I use that yellow color again to set out the sort of subheadings or other important topics within that single lecture slide. For example, let's talk about definitions. Uh, we have the DEXA scan, osteoporosis, osteopenia, fragility, etc. So these are sort of subheadings within the single lecture slide, and I'll put those in a different color as well. All of my normal writing or sort of general facts, general ideas, etc. is going to be done in gray. After that, I write all of my medicines, all of my treatments, anything pharmacology related in this bright green color that you guys can see over here. And so if I'm scrolling through a lecture, let's say for here, uh, osteoporosis and metabolic bone disease, and I wanna quickly scan to what are the treatments of osteoporosis, I can quickly look for the light green colored words, and I know that that's gonna be the medications for that lecture. On top of that, I write things that I think are particularly important in red. Um, so that's what you guys will see over here. That will obviously immediately draw my attention when I take a look at this lecture slide in the future or when I'm reviewing it. And of course, I also copy paste all of the graphs or diagrams that I think are important. And yes, I could redraw it out myself. And yeah, that would probably make me remember it better but I'm generally writing a lot of lecture notes a day and I'm doing a lot of writing every single day. And so if I can save myself a little bit of time by not having to redraw out diagrams, I'll just copy and paste it to make my life a little bit easier. Let's see, what else do I have here? I usually write anything that I know is high yield for an exam or I've seen come up in previous exams or tests. I usually write that in purple. So anything in light purple has definitely come up on an exam before and anything in dark purple is likely going to come up on an exam because it's a really important idea or topic or something like that. So yeah, here we go. Anything in light purple is exam is examinable or I've seen it on an exam. So here I've even written exam question. So all of this in purple, I've seen come up in past tests or on exams and things like that. And so it's a fact that I definitely want to know. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up for my lectures. All of my lecture notes look exactly the same. They all have this exact same color scheme, the exact three columns. Let's for example, just take a look at the next subject over here. So again, one, two, three here, one, two, three. They all sort of work around the exact same color scheme, the exact same organization. And that helps me have continuity throughout my lectures and it helps me immediately identify information that I know is important. Now, when it comes to revising for exams, I take those lecture notes that I've made and I condense them down into the absolutely most important information, the most clinically relevant information. If you don't know, I'm a second year medical student at King's. And so most importantly for me from all of these lectures is the clinically focused and clinically relevant information. So for example, this is another series of lecture notes that I did. This one is on the pathogenesis of sepsis. And so after I've written my general lecture notes, which you guys will see here, when I'm reviewing this material for the exam, I will condense everything that I've written up there into the most important clinical information. And I will almost always do this in a yellow color. So for example, all of these lecture notes that you see up here has been condensed into just these few yellow notes over here. And that's sort of the most important, most high yield information that I can look at at a glance. So for example, here again, we have hospital acquired infections. Here are my three columns that I wrote for the normal lecture notes. And when I was reviewing this for my exam, I summarized it down into just this small amount of information that you guys see here written in yellow. 
And so that way I take my notes, which are quite long, quite big, and I summarize them down into as little as possible. I also quickly want to mention that this iPad is just so valuable for things like tutorials as well. So let's take, for example, these case-based discussions over here. This is a printout that you would get handed in class or you would have to print it out before you came to class. And so instead of me writing on this piece of paper or this handout that I know I'm definitely going to lose the second I get home, I'm just going to take it out of my bag and it's going to get lost. I have it here on my iPad and it's electronically available. I can of course write on it, highlight, etc., etc., And it's just always going to be there. And I can access these notes at any time from any place, even if I don't have an internet connection, it's all saved on my iPad. Of course, it also syncs with my laptop. And so any changes that I make on my laptop are transferred over here and any changes that I make here are transferred to my laptop. So it's just a really, really great way to make sure you never lose anything to keep yourself organized. Honestly, the iPad is fantastic. And I also use Notability for other aspects of my life as well. You can see here that I have a to-do list. And right now you can see it's a little bit empty because I've done most of these deadlines that have come up over here. Um, but I use it to track my to-do list. It's sort of like my homework diary or my little notepad that I used to use to keep track of everything in my life. You know, things I have to do when I get home, administrative stuff, things for the house, etc. I just write it down on my iPad now instead of a piece of paper. I also use my iPad to keep track of my Karma Medic YouTube channel. So everything from you know, video ideas to writing down on the iPad things that I want to put into videos, um, et cetera, et cetera, taking a look at my channel analytics and things like that. I use my iPad to keep track of basically everything in my life. Let's get this boy out of the way. In fact, I think it's turned off because it stopped recording. No battery power <laughs> remains. Great, well, we'll see how much of a second angle you guys get in this video. Anyways, guys, I think that covers everything that I wanted to talk about, about how I use my iPad to take notes in university. If you guys enjoyed this video or found it useful at all, definitely feel free to leave a like on the video. It really helps out the channel and I would appreciate it. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Instagram or subscribe to this channel to get even more content from me if you enjoyed this video that much. But anyways, guys, that is it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.